This is Sony's new DualSense Edge wireless pro controller for the PlayStation 5 and PC. Along with the controller and its carrying case, you're gonna get a braided USB-C charging cable, two half dome back buttons, two lever back buttons, two low and two high dome thumbsticks that can be easily interchangeable based on your preference. And you also get a connector housing to hold your charger into place while you're gaming. It's been a lot of fun using this controller the past few days. And of course I could sit here and tell you all about it, but I'd rather just show you why this controller is so pro. Let's get into it. The first thing that's gonna happen as soon as you power on and plug in this controller into your PlayStation 5 console is that you're gonna get a little tutorial overview of the features that this controller offers. But the feature within the PlayStation 5 operating system that makes the design of this controller so great is within the custom profiles. From the PlayStation home screen, if you go over to your settings and then you scroll down to accessories, then you scroll down a little bit more, you'll find the DualSense Edge wireless controller accessory settings. From here, you can go into your custom profiles. I've already made a couple for Call of Duty and Rocket League, but for the purpose of this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to create one from scratch. So to do that, we're gonna go up to the top and select create a custom profile. We're gonna name this one Fortnite. Select OK. Within here, you're gonna see five primary different settings that we can modify specific to this profile that we're working in. So that includes customizing the button layout, the stick sensitivity in dead zone, trigger dead zone, vibration intensity, and trigger intensity. We're gonna start off in the customizing the button assignments. And within here, you can select any of the default map buttons and switch it to a different button if you want. I don't really see why you'd really wanna do that, but maybe you guys have a use case out there for doing that. But I think for most of you guys, you're gonna care about the back buttons on your controller. So if you haven't already, attach either the dome or the lever back buttons to your controller. They're really easy to install, just line up the groove into place and it should slide right in. With the left and right back buttons attached, now we can assign any of the buttons that are available on the controller to either that left side or the right side back button. Since this is my Fortnite layout, I'm gonna have a button to pair for switching to my build material. So that should be circle. So we'll pair that to the left back button. Now for the right side, I'm gonna assign this to being able to jump. So to jump, that's usually always the X button, but now I can jump using the back button on the right side. So I'm gonna assign that accordingly. Once I have the buttons on the screen placed the way that I want, I'm just gonna go over to the right side and select apply, and those button settings will be saved to the profile. Next, we can check out the stick sensitivity and dead zone. And within here, you can have control over the left and right sticks individually for how you want the sensitivity to be. There's a multitude of different sensitivity curves that you can choose from. Most people will probably stick with default or precise, but I'll give you guys a quick overview of these curves. So quick is gonna be very very snappy, fast movement. You're probably gonna overshoot your targets with this one, but this will give you an edge if you're looking to move as quickly as possible when aiming at a target. Precise, on the other hand, has a very minimum but stable response curve. You may find that you'll undershoot your targets a little bit, but this is great for games that just have too high of a sensitivity that you just can't lock into a good spot. Now, steady, this one's gonna be for those of you who are new to gaming or first person shooters, and you don't have the feel just right for how to aim down sight or move move in these type of games. Now for digital, it is super fast. It is the quick preset, but even faster to the absolute max for quickness. As for the dynamic preset, a lot of you guys might like this one because it allows for a slower, steadier motion closer to the dead zone. But then when you move outside of that dead zone area, it becomes a lot more snappier and faster. When selecting any of these sensitivity curves, you'll have an option to adjust that curve to your liking. So if I select the curve adjustment option, I can pull this to be even faster and slower in the middle, or I can pull it back the other way and kind of straighten it out closer to like the default setting. Below that, you can adjust the dead zone itself. This is a fantastic setting in case you start experiencing stick drift on this controller, which hopefully that doesn't happen. But if you guys aren't familiar with what a dead zone is, it's that small area 
right in the center of the thumbstick to where motion is detected. When you adjust this dead zone, you're not gonna have motion within that black dark circled area until you pull it enough outside of that area to where motion can be detected. I'm gonna go ahead and set mine back to default, but at any moment that you guys wanna see that thumbstick motion in action, just look over to the right hand side, move the thumbstick around, and that'll give you a feel for how your motion will be in game. Just remember, you gotta do that for the left stick and the right stick. Let's go over to the trigger dead zone. This, honestly guys, just keep default. On the back of the controller, you're gonna see these two knobs where you can adjust the length that you need to press down to go from zero to 100 with the L2 and R2 triggers. I love this feature because not all games need to have the same trigger feeling. Now you guys can also adjust the vibration intensity from strong to off or the trigger effect intensity from strong to off. And this will come down to personal preference. So now at this point, we have our profile configured. It's gonna be under our unassigned profiles as it's not assigned yet. But if we want to assign it, all we need to do is go to this controller icon here, and then we can assign it to one of our profiles that are not currently in use. Let's assign it to my last remaining empty profile, select that function button and square at the same time, and it'll switch to my Fortnite profile. If you select the three dotted icon next to one of your profiles, you can rename it, delete it, and also copy it. Another thing you guys have to know about these function buttons is the extra capabilities it offers when you're in the middle of a game. So let's say you want to change your profile, but you don't want to go all the way back to the accessory settings to make this modification. Well, all you need to do is hold one of the function buttons down and you can switch to any of your profiles by selecting the X, circle, triangle, or square buttons. You also have the added capability of adjusting your headphone volume and game and chat audio balance using the left and right directional pad while holding down the function button. To make sure you never lose that capability within the function menu settings, make sure that you always have display function menu enabled and that all functions are displayed. For the brightness of the controller, I like to keep this dim so that it doesn't reflect against my TV or monitor. Also, the battery life will be a little bit longer since it's not on the strong brightness setting. If you go below that, you can take the tour again that was showcased when you initially plugged in your controller. You can check the firmware of the controller to make sure that it's on the most recent version. And then below that, you can reset your DualSense to the factory settings. Now, how about for my PC gamers that wanna use this Edge controller? Well, you're gonna need to download the DSX app, which stands for DualSense X, through the Steam store. It will set you back $5, but it'll be well worth it as this is one of the only apps that will allow you to use your Edge controller with your PC. If you're on the latest version of DSX, you can map your back buttons any way that you desire. Just remember to set your controller emulation to DualShock 4 and that you also set your input device to controller in your games. Now the real question is, does this give me an edge while I'm gaming? Let's see how we do. Got one kill, right off the bat. Oh. Got another. Ooh. See how we're jumping with the back paddles here? Jump, jump, and we can dive with the back paddles. Jump, jump, dive. The true power of this controller is not having to take our thumbs off the sticks. Dive. Nice shot, there we go. Oh man, he was sliding on me. Nice little jump. There we go. Somebody's in here. Yep. <laughs> How about some Rocket League? For this game, I like the triggers to be a little bit more soft. So we're gonna adjust these to be a bit longer. Now we also have to adjust our controller profile from Call of Duty to Rocket League. So I'm just gonna hold down one of the function keys here and then just select X as that's where my Rocket League controller profile is assigned to and I'm good to go. Let's hop into some competitive games. Why not? Let's go. The main thing I have assigned here is my left paddle for drifting. So let's see if we can get a little bit of use out of this. All right, good start. See, I can kind of drift here a little bit. <laughs> that did not work. Nice save though. Oh, I got, you bumped me just off a little bit so I couldn't get the boost. And I gave it away. <laughs> but we're a little faster. If that can go in, that'd be awesome. It does not go in, we're not lucky. See little, little see my, my drift that I did there? 
Are you kidding me, dude? This guy's playing hard. There we go. This should be a go. Hmm, take him a little bit. Try to drift, uh, drift a little bit there. You see what I just did there? Oh, okay, he missed it a little bit there. Come on, it's for the homies on YouTube, baby. <laughs> oh no, no, what? Okay, it's not working out, boys. You know something? While I've been playing this game, I think a better back button to attach here would be for running. So that way I don't have to like take my finger off of the thumbstick just to run. Instead, I could just press a back button for it. So I'm gonna go to my custom profiles. Let's go in here real quick. This is how fast you can update this too. And then I have the other back button assigned for jumping using X. What? Mole. Looks like you got him. I'm gonna try to flank this guy. Jump. Got him. Try not to take any unnecessary damage. Alright, let's just do this real quick. A little quick build. We'll get him. We'll get him. There we go. Stuff. Another guy in the distance we gotta get. A little run. Oh, he hit me so good! We are very, very dead here. <laughs> this guy is not taking no for an answer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely took some terrible L's during our gaming session today. This controller is awesome. It feels just like the DualSense, just with added features, but you gotta work with getting used to the back buttons for the different games that you're using them for. But it's uh, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me use it and learn about how to use it as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all later. Peace.